anything? And Zach, take it away. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank Jennifer. You. Um, so as she said, I'm Zach Huber. I will be presenting thank today. You. I am the um, a, a business specialist librarian at the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. We have profit department. It's changed names a few times, um, but um, it's a relatively new service here at the library. A couple years ago when we renovated the building, we took some of our former reference staff and moved them into this department so that we can work one-on-one -on -one with um, business owners, nonprofit leaders, um, people who want to start a business, entrepreneurs, um, to show them our resources, connect them to our partners, um, help them with business planning, grant research, the whole gamut that you can think of here, uh, which I will be covering today. Um, I did want to say that I am a relatively informal presenter, so um, I'll be doing most of this work sharing my screen, showing you our resources, um, but if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. I will try to check them often, um, but if not, you can unmute yourself. I'm very comfortable with that. It won't bother me at all. Uh, in fact, once you, I don't know if you've all done a lot of um, pre presenting with sharing your screen, it's kind of hard to see all the Zoom functions at that point. So um, the, the louder you are, the easier it is. Um, so let me share my screen and I can kind of dive in. Um, I, I was told that they're both for-profit and non-profit service providers here today. So I'm going to really cover a little bit of everything. I hope you don't feel overwhelmed by it. The point of today is to just know that these resources exist and if you want more information or you want me to revisit them, um, I am always available by appointment. We can do a one-on-one -on -one either on Zoom, at one of our libraries, um, and whatever works for you, we can make that happen, okay? So let me hit share here. Okay, so um, here's the rabbit hole, everybody. This is the um, small business and nonprofit support page that we have on the library. And to get here, um, you can either go straight to this URL, toledolibrary.org slash SBN, or if you're just entering through the home page, you can get to it through um, the services option on the navigation bar and um, down here on small business nonprofit support in the middle column. Um, this is a new website for us. We had, I don't know if you heard in the news a few months ago, we actually had a cybersecurity attack. And so we had to rebuild our website. So this is different even for me um, at this point. And there are some resources on here that don't need to be on here and they will be coming off, but I will um, focus in on the ones that um, are important for, for our services here today. And I will really truly go over everything. So you can see, um, well, actually, I'm going to take a step back here before I dive in those. Uh, all of our resources are available to anyone in the state of Ohio at no cost. Um, if you're coming, if you live in Michigan or have services in Michigan, you can still get a library card with us. It just costs $75 a year. But if you work or live in Ohio, it is free. Um, and you can even get one uh, a card without having to come into the library to access these digital resources if you don't have one already. Um, it won't let you get uh, books to check out. You'd have to go into a branch and get a, car, a physical card that way. But if you go, um, let's see, this is the new website test. Let me see if it's where I think it is. Um, go to connect and then get a library card. It will ask you just some questions, probably um, your um, your uh, state ID number, your, so your license number, and you'll be able to get a digital card right away to access these resources if you don't have a card with us. So um, I'm going to go in here and we're just going to start on the nonprofit side and introduce these resources, and then I'll cover the small business ones, and then we'll dive into all of these lovely resources down below. So. Um, I focus on both nonprofits and for-profit businesses. I have a colleague here in the department. Her name is Linda. She uh, is primarily on the business side. So if you are uh, working on the nonprofit side and you do want to explore these further, you'll definitely want to reach out to me specifically. But if you're on the business side, please know that there are actually a couple options here. Um, Right here for our, on the nonprofit side, you'll see um, that you can contact us here through our, our shared email address. Um, but also we do have a newsletter that I send out once a month that um, has a little bit of the resources that we're sharing. I like to feature some resources or even share some local grant opportunities that are coming up. Uh, on the, the small business side, we have the same, uh, the newsletter that you can sign up for. I think that one's actually quarterly. Um, and that's a great way to stay on top of our programs that come up. Um, I teach grant writing. I do prospect research. Uh, Linda does um, uh, record keeping, like um, a, a, a 
book-based accounting. Uh, if you want to learn more about accounting, she does a program called um, the One Year Action Plan, um, a lot of other uh, one-off programs like LinkedIn learn learning program. So uh, if you want to just learn what, what's coming up, it's a great way to stay on top of that is to sign up for those newsletters. And they do have different focuses. So if you um, only want the nonprofit programs and sign up for the nonprofit one and vice versa. So I'm gonna open up all of these options here before I go into them. Okay. So first you'll see, um, I mean, I'm debating whether I actually wanna cover this right now um, because it, you, you won't really quite understand it until I show you the database, but um, so we have a grants database at the library called Foundation Directory. It's only available at Main Library. And so to help people use that, I have this form here that, so if you're a nonprofit, you can fill out this form and I'll send you things from that database. And so that will make a, make a little bit more sense once I show you that tool, but it is the first thing on here. So I wanted to cover it, but if you, you would like some, some grants information sent to you, um, all you have to do is fill out that form, give me some information and I will email you um, some funder profiles back and some list of funders depending on or related to the project that you're, you describe. Below that, and this is on both sides, both the nonprofit and the business side, we are um, in the middle of a pilot program for our branches. So we have all these appointments. So typically, Linda and I are um, mostly available for our services, our one-on-one -on -one services at Main Library or on Zoom. But we, on Tuesdays, we are out in the county um, at other locations. So if there's a spot that is more convenient for you to meet with us, um, take a look at that schedule and you can just schedule an appointment online right there. Um, you'll be able to pick your branch and the um, time slot that you'd like. And then below that, I have some, some resources on starting a nonprofit. And I know most of you are already providers, so um, you might be considering you know the transition from for-profit to nonprofit. So that is one of my, my primary areas is helping people navigate that process. I don't fill out the legal paperwork with you, but um, sometimes it can be a burden just to understand what those steps look like. And so I um, have a handy checklist. I walk individuals through um, what it takes to become a nonprofit and where all those steps can be found, whether it's incorporating with the state, getting your tax exempt status, filing with the attorney general's office, um, and then some of those nuanced things like how many board members do I have to have legally? Um, what are the fees associated with each of these steps? Uh, making sure you're keeping records of all of your board meetings. So um, I, I, I try to cover those very basic steps with everyone that's thinking about entering um, the nonprofit field. If you're already in business with at, as a nonprofit, um, here are some resources that I always share. So Board Source is a great tool for board governance. We have a lot of their books here at the library. I have a policy sampler. It's a digital resource that I share with um, individuals all the time. So if you need to revamp your board policies or create um, uh, an onboarding process for board members, we have that. Candid Learning is a free resource. It has lots of classes on grant writing, fundraising, just um, nonprofit management in general and then Candid Overdrive is a great place to check out um, digital resources. So free um, nonprofit um, ebooks or audiobooks are available here. Um, and I'd like to highlight that because while we are a library with resources, we don't often buy those in digital form. So if that's um, something that you're really interested in, uh, the Candid Overdrive is great and it's free for anybody. And then GuideStar, I'm gonna talk about GuideStar a little bit later. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, the, that's a, a link right here. And then the bulk of my work is actually helping organizations find grant funding. So here are some quick links, um, both for um, individuals and organizations. So we, we've got federal or government funding here. And then these are really interesting links um, that could help you with, with clients that you serve. So findhelp.org and needhelppayingbills.com are these aggregate resources for individual assistance. And I'll just open one. They're, they're essentially the same, but worth checking out. And if I go to, I'll do findhelp.org and type in just a zip code here. 
what we get is a breakout of all of the assistance programs in the area, whether that's, you know, food, medical assistance, transportation, paying for utilities or housing, finding housing, work assistance, legal assistance. Um, a lot of that can be aggregated on these two resources. So um, if you're working with individuals who need some of those, in fact, maybe some of your own resources might be listed on this. Um, and maybe you want to check out that they're, they're correctly listed. But um, those two re are, are resources, social resources for individuals. And then um, this is the tool I'll show you today that the library has, um, Foundation Directory Online, only available at Main Library. And this is a, another similar tool that's available free to anybody. Um, this isn't a library subscription or anything like that. It's called grandmakers.io. And then here are my partner organizations. Um, so we've got uh, the Association for Fundraising Professionals. Um, if you are a nonprofit professional and you're looking to network or get training, um, a great organization to get involved with. Then there's the Center for Nonprofit Resources, who offer a lot of uh, training and even um, certificate programs for nonprofit leadership. Dovia is an organization centered around volunteer management. In Puzzlement, um, it's a local organization that offers discounted goods for your programs. So if you need snacks for your program or um, little like little fidget things that um, you want to give away as prizes, and Puzzlement's a great organization to check out to get discounts on those goods, and it's only for nonprofits. Um, the Grant Professional Association. So uh, that could be for you as a grant writer, but also it's a great place for um, finding a, a directory of grant writers to um, uh, do freelance work for your organization. And then of course, there's the Greater Toledo Community Foundation who um, they have their own grant programs that I always recommend you check out outside of our own databases. And then um, on the small business side, let me open these. So we already talked about this. This is again, just the same link over here to schedule an outreach appointment. And then here is a, a list of our partners. And actually, I think I'm going to open this, the other two because they're essentially all lists of our partners. Um, we are part of an ecosystem here in Lucas County of providers, and we are called the, the Business Growth Collaborative. And so if you're on, well, actually, if you're on really the, the nonprofit or the for-profit side, um, these organizations can provide you assistance and largely at no cost. So um, they are... Um, they, they all vary in their own um, specialties, so I'm not going to kind of dive into what all of them do, but um, some of the ones I wanted to highlight because I talked to Jennifer about them is, you know, we have the Minority Business Assistance Center, and um, we also have, I don't see it on here. There's also the uh, Minority Business Development Center. So if you're uh, um, if you own or operate your organization and you are a minority leader, um, you can get a lot of assistance from these programs. Whether that is you know becoming certified as an edge business or a minority-owned business or even a, a women. Um, well, I guess I don't know what Ohio recognizes women-owned businesses specifically. I think that actually falls under the edge certification, which is for disadvantaged groups um, in general. So uh, I, there is the WBE Women Business Enterprise. I think that might be more of a national um, uh, distinction, but you can get a lot, a lot of assistance. And the um, Minority Business Development Center also has office space and utilities available for organizations that are just getting started out. So that could be you know, getting office space for as low as $150 a month, um, which is really impactful if you're just trying to get um, a physical space to operate out of. Other ones I, I like to highlight on here, um, ECDI is, is a, a nonprofit lender and so is LISC. And so if you are getting to the point where you need to get funding and um, you're not sure that you want to approach a bank or or maybe uh, you want something that's smaller than a traditional bank loan, some banks won't lend less than $25,000. Um, the ECDI and LISC are two great options and very trustworthy because we refer to people to them all the time for um, getting funding. And I, I know that if they think that there's a better opportunity out there for you, they are willing to tell you to go there. So if they think that you get a better interest rate from a traditional bank, they'll, they'll recommend that. But they have some great programs. One is um, a Kiva loan, if you've never heard of that program before. Um, it is a 0% interest loan, uh, but it does require a little extra kind of step before you would be accepted into that. And that is reaching into your own network to get um, some of your um, 
friends and family, some of your, your network to put a little bit of money into the game. And that's what enables you to get access to that 0% interest loan. Um, they also have special programs for um, uh, immigrant businesses, minority businesses, women businesses. So it's always great to just go to their websites, check them out and reach out and learn about what programs that they have. If you're looking for funding to get new employees, to do some building upgrades, um, things like that. Uh, other things that I, I, I like to highlight are some of our other service providers uh, in the in the ecosystem, like Jumpstart. They, they we we recommend um, working with them if you're looking for marketing help or um, investor pitch help. Uh, there's also uh, the Small Business Development Center, which it might not be on this. There, it's the Toledo Small Business Development Center. Um, if you're working on a business plan and need help getting your financials together they can do that at no cost you don't you do not want librarians to do your financials we will not be able to do that very well for you so we all we we do lots of help on business planning but we always refer to them when it comes to financials but they also do have some great marketing assistance right now so if you want to get a basic website set up or need some help getting social media going um, they are offering services like that right now uh, women of Toledo, if you are a women owned business, uh, if you want some mentorship in running your business, always great uh, re referral to them. The rest here, we've got uh, the various chambers of commerce on here. Uh, they all have different things to offer, whether it's just the location or if it's something like the Toledo African American Chamber or the Northwest Ohio Hispanic Chamber um, to get some of the specialized resources. Um, not everyone realizes how many chambers we have in this county. So it's always great to see what those options are. And then of course, there's the, the federal, state and federal resources. A lot of these are gonna be more on the starting up side. Um, if you haven't um, gone through some of these things, like how do you pay your taxes on the state level? How do you get your EIN? Um, how do you get an LLC? So I, I assume most of you have kind of navigated that process already, but we do help with that side as well. So um, those are just the quick links that we have on the top. Before I kind of jump into our actual databases, the, the, the meat and potatoes of what we do here at the library, um, are there any questions over any of those? Or um, do you have any um, needs out of those providers that you'd like to, to ask about before I dive into the other resources? Let me check the chat too. I know everyone was introducing themselves a second ago. If not, I will get started on those, but feel free to, like I said, unmute, ask your questions or put them in the chat. Um, these are the resources that we offer, um, kind of the pr pr proprietary databases that we are paying for the public to use. And I mentioned that this website has, was recently under um, construction. So there's more databases on here than I would like at the moment. And we're working to get those removed. We just have to build a list. Um, like we, we have all these investment resources on here that it's not really our wheelhouse and not what we'll be covering here today. So you'll see me skip around. Um, but what I really want you to see is that we have these tools. You're not gonna be able to memorize all of this today. Um, what you'll, you, some of this might resonate with you or you might wanna follow up with me later um, on some of these tools, but I just wanna give you really that full spectrum of everything that we have to offer. And I see the chat here. Oh, just more introductions, okay. So the first one I'm going to do is the business. Oh, I hear someone unmuting. Zach, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. So, hi, my name is Dana. So one of the questions I wanted to ask, because um, I'm like in between cities. So mm -hmm. one of the things that you had said was about the, the library and joining, and that if you live anywhere in the state of Ohio. But now some of these programs that you offer, are all libraries doing that? Are you in partnership with certain libraries in the state of Ohio or um, can some of these tools be used in other areas? So a lot of the, the resources I'm about to show you, you'll find at other libraries. Um, the, it, you will find most of these resources in the bigger cities. It's the smaller ones that you might not see a lot of these. Um, so before I came to this library, my, my original background's in nonprofits, but I did work at like the, the Findlay Library for a, a year, and that's a much smaller library. And we only had one of these tools. So your urban libraries will have many of these, um, but we welcome anybody, honestly, 
um, to join our programs. We, we try to keep our programs virtual so anyone can attend them. Um, and uh, the databases are the same. Anyone in the state of Ohio, we, we welcome to use. But if you turn to like your Columbus Library, Cleveland, Cincinnati, those, those city libraries, you'll see a lot of these same ones. And they're the same way because the way Ohio libraries are funded, um, they accept anyone in the state to get cards there as well. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? No, okay. So the first one I'm gonna show you, it, it, it's um, not one I actually use a lot. It's business book summaries, but it's great for the, the busy entrepreneur. So you may have heard of the, uh, of the latest and greatest business book. Maybe someone recommended one to you, but you just don't have the time to read it. Um, you can look up those, those books here and really just get a six page summary of all the material that's in them and not have to read all of that. Um, or maybe you just wanna make sure it's a good fit for you. And so uh, we have all of these business books by category off to the side. And when you open one, so I'll just pick a random one here. Let's look at the, uh, the burnout epidemic because I'm sure we are all feeling that right now. <laughs> Um, but what we get is um, a summary of the key takeaways. And then, like I said, it's just a six page summary of everything that's in that book. So you can just absorb it as quickly as possible. And um, maybe you'll decide that you want to give it a full read, but you'll still get the gist of it in a much quicker time frame. And then you'll be able to download this as a PDF as well. So that can be anything from management to uh, what are other ones here? Um, healthcare, entrepreneurship, customers, marketing, productivity. Um, and we do have a few in other languages as well. Um, but this is always just a great uh, referral. But like I said, it's not one that I, I personally use a lot, but I think when it, when it comes down to connecting with you as entrepreneurs, it's a great resource to know about. Let's go back one more. Um, the other one that I mean, sorry, the next one is business source premiere. And this is one where I use a little bit more. Um, it's going to have a bit of a focus on um, more research. So um, EBSCOhost, if you've not used this before, EBSCOhost provides a lot of our research databases, but this one is specifically for um, businesses. So it can really be anything. If you're trying to work on a business plan, you might need to pull in some, some resources, but um, let's see what we can get. Um, as a sample search, let's do since I let's let's pull in your industry here. We'll do um, developmental mentally disabled. What was there, that was the second one? Developmental disabilities, and we'll see what um, has been published in this area in the business database here. So um, I like to usually refine this a little bit. So let's get full text articles, and I'm gonna want things that are a little bit more recent than 1956. Let's see the last 10 or so years. All right, and so we can, we can see where these are coming from. So we've got things from magazine articles, academic journals, trade publications. So that might be the best of interest um, to all of you as these trade publications, or you're more than welcome to just scroll through all of these and see what they have. Um, you'll see a lot of articles and videos, but if I just wanna see what's going on with the trade publications, we get these articles, let's see. So um, designing out stigma for mental health facilities should start with demolishing walls. So this is probably an article about, you know, physical space and how that can work with your, um, your, your patients, your customers, your, your clientele. Um, let's see. Hospital construction survey, technology and power, human in the loop, low wage work. And uh, I don't know how that works with, that's not a relevant article. <laughs> Designing framework created for mental health centers. So um, this would be a problem. This is probably from a trade publication. Uh, you're going to get um, an article in full PDF text here, and we can see it's going to cover. We've got a little bit of an abstract here, focusing on design for inpatient mental health facilities um, created by the U.S. Veterans Affairs. So um, this this gives you just kind of an inkling of what you'd be able to find in this. Usually, what we use this database for is is pulling in research um, for a business plan. Uh, to, to get um, some of that industry research that most people are struggling to fill out on their own. Um, that's where we, we kind of come in is, is to pull them in here. Um, sometimes we might be able to get SWOT analysis. Um, I don't know if we'll get one for this industry. Oftentimes we get them for the like really big companies and I don't know 
um, if there are a lot of really big companies out there in this industry. So if I just type in SWOT analysis, Let me do an advanced search here. Oh, I was right. I mean, I guess I was wrong because I thought I wouldn't get one. Um, so we've got um, a SWOT analysis for um, what's a business called ResCare, which is a human service company providing residential therapeutic job training and educational supports to people with developmental or other disabilities. So um, if you are you know, working on any strategic planning or even business planning, um, and you're not familiar with what a SWOT analysis is, a SWOT analysis is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And learning about your competition and what they put in as their strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats is a great way to plan your own. Um, you can see what a, a business is saying is there weaknesses or their threats, and you might be able to develop a strategy that makes you um, stronger in those areas. So let's see what we can just quickly scroll to. So here's theirs. So there's their SWOT analysis. They are saying that their strengths, they're a market leader, which that makes sense while they're in this database, um, strong growth and employment training, um, a wide range of services. Their weaknesses are weak operating performance, low returns, and weak presence in international markets. Not might not be an opportunity here locally, but we've also got threats, cost containment measures, shortage of qualified nurses, and increasing labor costs and regulatory changes. So it's always good to know what's going on in the industry, what trends there you're seeing. And so this one's a little dated. I'm sure we could probably find some more recent ones. I think this one said it's from 2007. But these are some of the, the, the great content that you can find in um, Business Source Premiere. The next um, business database we have is DMB Hoover's. Uh, I'll open it. I don't know that we're going to get a lot that's going to apply here today. But DMB Hoover's is another tool that we have to research competition um, or just get a little bit of industry information. So you can build a company list to find those um, organizations. Um, again, in this case, it would probably be more of those larger providers, um, but they're still your competition. So let's see. So um, let's come up with a... Jennifer, who, who's a good big operator in this space, like a big um, corporation that you might think of? Sorry, I was looking for a new. Um, some of the big DD providers are um, Sunshine, okay. and DD, um, Nanahan. I, I guess those would be three of the biggest ones that I could think of. Sure. So let, let me see if I can find, like I said, this is tends to be for bigger corporations. So I'm not sure um, that we'll, we'll be able to use much of this today, but let me try um, do Sunshine and we'll do county location. We'll just do Toledo. Yeah, we're not getting any results. So what this is for, so when, when we use this with our customers, we're looking for those big companies. Um, so if someone's going into retail, um, this might be where we look to see some of their competitors get that industry information. Um, I'll go back and see if we can um, access any industry information for this. So I, I tried to build a company list. I, I didn't think it would work for this one, but we can do a, a research industry. We might be able to get something here. We will do, I have the SIC code, which is a business industry code. And let's do 8331. So we've got health services. We might have to go pretty vague on this one. So A three. So we'll just include social services here. 
So we would be able to, we could, I know there's a lot of variations in, in the, the services that all of you provide. So I don't want to overcommit here, but I know there's residential care. We've got you know, job and vocational rehabilitation, individual family, social services. So a lot of these would apply, um, but I kind of just went with the overall category here. I'm going to uncheck the health services. And so we'll try to get an industry report. We'll see what we can get from here. We will do individual and family social services. And so again, this is all for trend research, um, business planning. Um, let's see, this is also an international database. So again, this might be bigger than we wanna go for here, but let's see if we can find a market research report for United States. So, so here's, here are a few. So we've got um, uh, industry norms report for child and youth services, services for elderly and persons with disabilities. And so we can pull this up and this is gonna be probably very hard to read on your screens, but we have some benchmarking data. So um, if you were ever into the point where you wanna look at a lot of numbers, um, what this is telling us is we would find um, organizations of um, our revenue sites and we wanna go zero to 500 million. So that again, this is for larger corporations um, and then we get these benchmarking. So how much um, of a percentage of your um, income should be on cash and equivalents or how much you should be um, having be holding in liabilities. Um, I would actually recommend in this case, if you want to get benchmarking data to go to the Small Business Development Center, because they're going to have a lot more for organizations of your size um, than this database is going to have. But just showing you all the options here. So that, again, this is DMB Hoover's. Um, should you ever want to um, look at these reports, they're here, but they might be a little complex. I'm gonna come back to this one, Foundation Directory Online. That one I can spend a lot of time on. This is where we're gonna find our grants. Um, so I'm gonna come back to that at the end. I do wanna highlight Gale eBooks here. So there's a lot going on in Gale eBooks, but what we do in our department um, is a lot of help on business plans. And so there is what we have, the, the business plan handbook. And you can search for this just by typing in the search box, but I just went to the business section here off to the side. And it's right here, it's the second one that pops up every single time. And we can look for funded business plans. So if you are looking to get financing or you're just starting out um, and you want to get a business plan set up, so, you know, for your next five years or so, I always recommend having a business plan, even if it's not for financing, we can get some um, pre-existing samples here. So uh, a good keyword, since I, like, I, I know that there's a lot of variation going on with your organizations, if I just type in care, we can see what pops up. And so we get elder care, mentally disabled care facility, uh, another one, uh, probably more of an update since this one looked a little old here, adult daycare center, senior care facility, elder care. So let's take a look at the, this one here. And so what this is, it, it is a, a, a real existing business plan uh, that you can use to work off for your own. And that, that I find is really helpful um, if you've not done a business plan before because all of this, all the terminology can seem a little overwhelming. So you get a good idea of what um, someone put in for their products and services, for their industry analysis, for their market strategy. Um, you can download this into a PDF and it looks a little bit easier to read when it's like that. Um, but it is a real business plan. This is a real business. They probably renamed it. I'm trying to find the industry analysis here Mark, or market analysis. So um, when you are working on a business plan, um, that's where we kind of come into play. We will help you with the market analysis, your industry analysis, finding your competition, identifying your customer. That's really where we pull the research in on a business plan. The rest is what I, I, I call, you know, you're making it up. It's, it's how you want to operate. It's your business um, structure, uh, how many employees you plan on having, your management structure. The rest is really um, your choice as a business owner or a nonprofit leader, but um, you want to get it, uh, some really good research on these other sections. So um, the market analysis, that is, you know, where you plan to find your customers, or I guess in your case, the clients. So getting a good idea of how many uh, potential clients are in your community is, is what you would likely have in the market analysis. Um, 
You can see they even actually pulled in their own SWOT analysis because we already talked about a SWOT analysis. So here they have their customers identified age 18 to 40, mild to moderate developmental disability, varying income. They have their, their competition, which I will show you how you can find your competition as well. But then we get to the rest, which is again, what I, uh, what I say is, is the made up portion. So how do you wanna market your business? So here's their marketing plan. Could give you some great ideas to see someone else's plan. They actually broke theirs out into some very um, detailed phases, which is interesting to see. Uh, they might be operating, operating as a nonprofit as well. I see a fundraising plan here. And they even go into giving circles. Wow, that's very interesting. And then their financial analysis. And I don't see that this one included financial and projections, which um, if you are seeking funding, you would want to have on at the end. But this is a longer business plan. Usually I see them to be about, um, about eight pages. This one's 18 pages. And I think that is because they went into such detail on some of those pieces. But that is um, primarily what we use um, Gale eBooks for, but there, there's a lot of other component parts in here. If I go back to the home page, uh, it can be really used for a, a lot of different areas. Um, some of this primarily for um, school-aged children doing projects or, or reports. You can see a lot in um, like the social sciences, or um, some of the other categories, women's studies, you've got um, a whole uh, section on business, but there's only 39 books in here. Um, we don't use most of them are, are here in our department. We primarily stick to the business plan handbooks, but always good to check out for other purposes. Uh, even if you have um, family members who are in school and need to work on a report and they didn't tell you it was due Monday and it's Sunday night and you need to get some research. So <laughs> good to know that you can access this um, at any time from home. Get back to the business page here. So the next one, um, so we've got Gale eBooks and then we've got um, Gale Legal Forms. So Gale Legal Forms is a database of completely vetted legal resources that you can use and just print and have. And so um, a lot of times here at the library in general, we'll use these for you know landlord tenant disputes, um, people who are going through a divorce or want to do a will, um, things like that. But there are applications in here for businesses. And I'm just going to be real vague, just real quick, just to show you some of the things that can pop up. And I'll go over some more specific specific examples too. But we're just, just if I just do a keyword search on business, you've got over 3,600 forms here, um, you know, selling your business, um, doing, getting a loan, uh, some accounting documents, but what I, I've done um, some research in here on the nonprofit side and some things that you might want to use this for is let, let's say um, you're doing a, a, a group outing and you need to get a liability waiver. And so here are um, uh, actually a lot, 380 forms that return on liability waivers. And so a, a lot of different forms, but if you go down to the bottom, since I mentioned group trips, they get to be very specific. So um, liability for a minor child at an archery range. Um, maybe you, you'll have that very specific trip, but this could be more, more general if you just want to um, look for a consultant agreement. So maybe you want to pull in a contractor. Consultant agreement. So here are various contracts that you can use um, for consultants, uh, hiring a consultant. Uh, there are some specific ones in here. There's, I think there's a one I saw earlier, a business consultant, an architectural consultant. So this is a great place to turn to if you're really just looking for um, a legal document. This, I would recommend starting here before you engage the lawyer, have to pay those fees. You might be able to find a legally vetted document here. Um, some other ones that you might want to see, we've got employment agreements. So if you're getting to the point where you're hiring employees, so here we have some of those employment agreement between a company and employee. So they're going to keep them generally vague, but what you'll get is you'll be able to download the Word document and 
edit that form to make it more specific to your business. So we just got some fill in the blanks here for an employment agreement. And I think it's just a couple of pages. This one's three pages. Um, some others that you might find. So if you are on the nonprofit side, you might look for documents for um, board meeting minutes or actually a good one that I, I share quite often is bylaws. So um, this is a sample for bylaws. I'm sure many of you already have them if you are a nonprofit, but if you ever wanna revisit those, Uh, this is not, it, there it is. So this is not familiar. Here it is. Um, so just a general bylaws agreement that um, your board can sign um, that you don't have to build from scratch and you can edit pretty easily. Let's see if there's any others that I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Are there any, um, any people in the audience today that you, you have been thinking about some sort of legal framework? Um, I can see if we can search for it real quick. If not, um, just know that this resource is here. It's actually available through um, any Ohio library because this is uh, provided to us through, um, you can see Oakland, um, which is a network of library providers. So pretty much any library in Ohio is gonna have this one. So that was Gale Legal Forms. And then, like I said, I'm gonna come to the nonprofit stuff at the end. Um, that's what GuideStar would be. Um, skipping the investment stuff. The next one we have on here is Legal GPS. Um, this one is more again for the startup side. But what Legal GPS is is a gamified platform um, to. It goes over the incorporation process, uh, both on the for-profit side and the nonprofit side. But it also goes over um, intellectual property. If that's something that your organization is thinking about, whether that's logos copyrights, trademarks, if you um, have, you know, special curriculum that you're thinking about copywriting, you can um, answer some questions in here and it will um, generate a list of recommendations on how you can go about um, getting those, um, those things in place. But um, while I'm kind of talking about intellectual property, um, the library is a patented, patent trademark resource center. So um, Linda and I can help you um, through some of that, we're certainly not lawyers, but once a month we have a program called Ask a Patent Trademark Copyright Attorney. And so that is the first Thursday of every month. So if you have some of those intellectual property questions regarding your own um, logos or um, copyrighted materials, you can ask those to an attorney at no cost. And it's really just, that's what it is. The program is just Q&A style. So anything that you have, um, if, you, if you're really worried about it, there, there might be other people in the room. So you might wanna speak generally if you're worried about um, those intellectual property rights, but um, it's a great way to connect with someone and get those answers at no cost as well. But um, that's what Legal GPS does on a very basic level. I've already done level one here. We can see um, it, it, it asked me some questions um, and I think I, I told it I wanted to do a nonprofit and level one didn't have much for me. So it's actually gonna be in level two that it's gonna do more recommendations. And so what this does is gonna ask me, have I selected my directors, my nonprofit? So I can say no. And that apparently is the only question I have to answer in this level. And then you view your results. And so here are um, the list of recommendations here. I think in, in um, level one, I told it I hadn't incorporated, but I want to incorporate as a nonprofit. So here are the steps. But then you start to see um, performing a trademark search, and it'll take you to these action steps to perform a trademark search, uh, making sure that you have all of your bases covered on incorporating, boards of directors, getting your bylaws, and then um, filing for exemption. So and there's a third level after you get that as well. Um, I don't, I haven't done the third level. I've never needed to yet because I usually work with people on the, the first two levels, um, but it'll probably, oh, I'm sorry. I have to go in and I have to tell it that I did all these. Yay. <laughs> go back. Go to level three. 
So level three it covers more advanced um, post formation legal questions. So that would be the level that all of you probably are, like I said, um, so things that you would run into as a business owner and like and, and I mentioned intellectual property. So um, you might want to jump on this platform, fill out level one and two really quickly, and then explore what the options are for level three. So that was legal GPS. And then a link to learning is one of my favorite ones. So I'm going to open that one and, and it has so many great resources for anyone of any level here. So LinkedIn Learning used to be called lynda.com if you're familiar with it. Um, you can subscribe to it privately, but if you access it through the library, it's free. Otherwise it would cost you about $35 a month. And so it is a database of courses and that can cover really anything. Um, on the business side. So if I go to browse, I get all of these, these breakout categories. And so we see business strategy, uh, marketing, leadership and management, entrepreneurship, project management. But um, that might be a little overwhelming to you, but I, I like to think of this as if, if you need any type of software training. Um, so maybe you are new to QuickBooks and you want to learn how to use QuickBooks better you can get a course on QuickBooks. So this is a four hour QuickBooks training. Um, this is an essential one and they go more advanced if you have some level of understanding there. And then um, every course that you complete, you can link to your LinkedIn account and you can share that um, there to make your, your resume more marketable. Um, but it's, it's great for software specifically. I mean, if you, if you wanna know Excel a little bit better. So I can do an essential training in Excel. If you go in there, um, they're very accessible. You can get um, the, being efficient oh, at Excel. Start yelling at me. Uh, you can get a transcript of it and follow along. Um, there's usually files, exercise files that you can download and practice on. Um, and then you can even go through and pick the very specific categories that you want from the class. Um, other ones that I've recommended, uh, if I just type in, uh, so if you're on the nonprofit side, there is a nonprofit management course you can take, fundraising videos as well. And you do want to pay attention to what it's saying. So these are all courses. It tells you how long it is, but sometimes, let's see if I can find one, you might just see a video, um, or I guess uh, not necessarily just a video, but it does say course, but I think these are just individual parts of a course. So the full course might be a few hours long, but if you watch just this individual segment of it, you get these shorter videos here. So um, any questions on that or anyone want to see a specific example what might be in LinkedIn Learning? Just overall great for professional development. Or if, you, if you're um, working with clients who might want to learn some um, job skills, uh, maybe interviewing skills, um, don't always just think about this for your own organization. If, if you have um, some, some technology needs with your clients, they, they want to learn some, some really basic like Microsoft Word skills, this could also be something that you use um, on that side as well. Okay, so that was LinkedIn Learning. Um, version archives, we're gonna skip that one because um, we don't even use that here. Again, like I said, I can't wait to refine this list. There's so many on here that are supposed to be pulled off at this point, but Merge Intellect is a great resource. And we use this a, a number of ways. So I'm going to approach this both from the business side and the nonprofit side. So first on the business side, um, we use this for industry reports. So again, on um, creating business plans or just learning more about um, industry trends, we go to first research here down at the bottom and it is opening. Maybe. Okay, that was weird. Okay. So it does ask you for an email address. You can make one up. It's never gonna email you. It's just so that it can save your searching. Uh, I wrote down, let's see. So this, is usually pretty good at covering a lot of variety of industries. Um, when you get to some niche areas, it, it doesn't always have exactly what you want. So we have to go kind of to those bigger categories. So if I go into, I think it's 8331, which is a social assistance industry. Oops, sorry. 
So it, it um, that is, like I said, the SIC code for your industry. So we would go and look for the industry report for social assistance, or you could even probably look at different healthcare industries, or depending on what your organization does, uh, maybe it's an assisted living center. Um, there are a lot of options here, but I'm just gonna go into the social assistance um, report. And what this does, it is an industry report that you can pull in um, to a business plan, or if you just want to see what's going on with the industry, there are industry opportunities, trends, business challenges. Um, this is just kind of the, the landing page of all of those, but there's more than just the one that's posted. So, you know, obviously we're seeing critical issues as the COVID-19 pandemic, but we can see what else is going on. This is saying um, another critical issue is dependence on government funding, uh, which makes sense. And um, this is actually a relatively recent report too. It just came out earlier this month. Um, business challenges, economic conditions drive donations and need. What are the trends using social media to connect? So just giving you some new ideas on, on how you're operating your day-to-day -day business. What are some opportunities? So it says growth in services to elderly. Let's click to see some other ones. Higher demand for substance abuse treatment, harnessing technology for organizing. So um, social assistance is kind of a broad category. So not all of these might apply to you specifically, but there could be great nuggets of information like harnessing technology for organizing. Uh, we also can pull some information, like I said, into a business plan. So we're seeing some great um, growth for the industry. Um, we're, we're seeing at least on average 5% growth every single year. That's something that you'd be able to put in a business plan. Um, one concern though, I did see th this little graph is great, but then it did say the growth rating is low. And the reason it has for that is cuts in government assistance and the demand depends on people needing help or um, efficient operations. Also can lead you to some industry websites as well. Um, so a lot of great information and you can um, download all of this into a PDF and save it and you can even view some of those archived reports. They, they tend to come out quarterly. So that is um, first research in Merchant Intellect. Again, that was the one we looked at here. So if you're coming from the nonprofit side and you need to write a grant, um, the demographic side or even the consumer data is a great place to look for that information or you could even use this in identifying your customer in a business plan. Um, so we can just analyze some swaths of data. So let's say you're operating in a certain zip code or you wanna compare a few zip codes. This is the library zip code 43604. And so what we can do is we can download all of these demographic reports. Um, I actually recommend coming here over the census website because um, the census website was revamped a couple of years ago and it's gotten a lot more challenging to use. And you just download these into PDFs and it's very um, easy to read. It's laid, laid out very well into graphs and charts, um, but you can download all of these um, demographic pieces of information. And that would be great if you're doing um, a grant proposal or even trying to identify your customers in a, a business plan. Um, I would show, I would open these, but you actually have to put your email address in and it emails them to you and it can take a few minutes and I don't want to um, waste too much time on that, but um, a variety of reports are available and you can do county, zip code, or, or city. But in the, um, if I go back to that homepage, the consumer data is so valuable for everyone. So this is where um, our ability to access data can be very surprising here at the library. So with this, we can pull um, marketing lists or um, we can do this for both businesses and individuals, but the, um, the level of detail that we can get to can, can actually be surprising. So let's, let's build a list here. Let's do a list um, by location and let's pull a list for Lucas County. County, add to criteria. You wanna make sure you're doing that for every piece here. And let's say we want to do a fundraising campaign or something like that. You can also try to um, maybe do, maybe you're doing a postcard and you wanna put your put your business on a postcard and, and mail it out so that you um, can, can get more clients. We can identify a lot of information here. So I'm gonna open all of them for us to see. 
So again, I know we're working with a diverse group of people here, so it could be a nonprofit or for profit, but what we were able to do is build a list. So let's say we want to access a list of people with a disposable income of more than $150,000. So we'll um, cap it at 400 here, just being arbitrary. And then we can pull in some um, really great consumer information. Let's click on, let's see. Trying to see if any of these actually apply um, to what we've been talking about. But I don't necessarily see one jumping out at me, but let's kind of approach this from the nonprofit. I know that there is a donator to charity. Um, so we can add that. Maybe we know um, that a lot of our customers are actually referrals from a parent in the home. So we might want to infer that someone is married or we might want to infer a certain education level or an ethnicity. We can really just build these very complex lists and I'll just grab some information just for examples here. So let's say we're looking for people who um, have completed at least high school, they're married, they, I clicked donate or to charity, and, and we want them to have an estimated income of 125,000. And so we've got 2,000 people here. So let's view that. So on the nonprofit side, I'm now able to download this list that I built and solicit these individuals. And I can just um, put them into an Excel spreadsheet And again, it's gonna want me to email this. Um, but if we go into these databases, this is a great way to prospect our donors too, if you are operating as a nonprofit. So let's click on, on Michael Abbott here. Um, so we can see all of this information. So um, he has an estimated net worth of 50 to 80,000. He's a donator to charity. Um, he's been in his home for 12 years. That home has been known to purchase plus size women's apparel. Um, they're a parent, they're a reader. So we get all of this consumer data and it, it can be kind of creepy when you learn that this information is out there on you. Um, but this particular database, I do like to point out, we have a better one um, that does the same thing. This one is not as accurate as the other one that'll show you. Um, I'm actually listed as still living at my parents' home, which has been over a decade since that's happened. So you do have to be aware that there are some discrepancies in here. But if you wanna build a customer list or um, a potential donor list, Merchant Intellect has some really great tools to really narrow in on a segment of customers um, and build that list at no cost. So that is, um, that's all I'll show you in, in Merchant Intellect. Um, if you wanna learn more about how to build a list, I'm happy to do that in a one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, the other one that we have that can build a list and that one that's a little bit more trustworthy on the information is Reference Solutions. And Reference Solutions is one we also turn to to find your competition. So there are a couple databases in here. Um, I, I work most, mostly with the US Businesses Database um, and the US Consumer and Lifestyle Database. Sometimes it's also great to use this for other reasons. So if you need, if you're working with a client and you're, look, and you're trying to find maybe a specialist physician, we do have a US Healthcare Database in here that you can um, search on really on a lot of criteria, including if your client is more comfortable working with a physician who's a female, or a certain ethnicity, um, you can find those to find the best fit of a physician for your client. But to find your competition, we go into the US Businesses Database and then the Advanced Search. So I always start with the geography and there's a lot of options here. We can do zip codes, uh, metro areas, county, we can even do a map-based search but a, I'll just do county. Lucas. That didn't work. There we go. And then um, to find certain industries, we, we turn to this section here um, and we're gonna do a keyword search. And I was playing around with it earlier to figure out what categories work here. Um, and we can do, uh, there's disability services. Okay. 
and there was also um, cognitive cognitive dis cognitive disability and developmental disability services right here. You can even add this one. So you're just building a list of these industries. Um, and so whatever you see in here, sometimes you can just look through what, what happened with your keyword search. You might see some other ones that work, but based off of just these three options, we can build a list of these providers in the county. And um, these, uh, we really trust this database because they are, um, Data Axel is who supplies Google Maps with all of their information. So they're held to a really high standard, um, but I am actually going to include unverified businesses because it takes a few years for a business to get verified in the system. So if we wanna look at younger businesses, um, checking that box can add more to the list. And so if you wanna find more information on your competition, here is a list of those service providers in Lucas County. So you might even see a lot um, of, of the people in this room are listed here. I know we, um, I see Ann Grady, I've worked with them on the nonprofit side before, um, but we can go in there, we can download this list and get a lot of information. But if we go in here, let's just click on, you know, Bittersweet Farms. And um, so we see those codes that we were searching for. And so this is the one that returned for us, but we might see some other codes that might help us build a better list that way. <coughs> Excuse me. But we can get some proprietary information too. So how many employees they have. Um, this one doesn't have sales volume, probably because it's a nonprofit. Uh, we get a business profile, how long they've been in the database, how long they, when they established, their credit rating, their hours of operation. Um, who's there. Um, this could be a little out of date sometimes, so you want to be aware, but who um, is in their management roles. Um, some estimates on what they spend on certain categories, so their rent, um, their advertising budget. These are actually going to be more informed based off of some sales volume. These are going to be some general numbers, um, not necessarily super specific on these, but the way that they get this information, it, some of it's going to come from the Census Bureau. Some of it is going to come from them calling all of these businesses once a year to verify this information. And you can download all of this um, information. Um, you are uh, limited in um, how many you can put in a download, but you're not limited in downloads. So it's going to limit you at 250 entries per download, but you can keep adding on to those afterwards. So you'll, you'll just have to combine them into a, a sheet all at once at the end. But um, if you wanted to work on a business plan and outline your competition, you'd be able to do so um, by building a list like this. Or if you want to find providers, if you need to find certain businesses to do things for you or to be suppliers for you, you can use this database for that. Um, other uses on the nonprofit side or even on the for-profit side to find, you know, if you're looking for customers or, or things like that, you can do what we just did in Merge Intellect and build a list of individuals. Um, so we can do the exact same things. We've got all these filters to, to work with to build that list. Um, whether it's just uh, making an announcement in your local community that you're there and your, your services are open, um, or you want to use this for, again, kind of grant data. So we can um, start to build a list off of all of this information and, and see how many people are in a certain area for a grant application that we're working with. And we have a lot of data that we can really sort on here. Um, you can see even in the lifestyle data here, some additional pieces. And like I said, I trust this database a little bit more than Merchant Intellect, but um, they can really do essentially the same thing. So I'm not gonna build another search here because um, it, it's really what we did before already. So um, this is one of our favorite tools. We refer to this a lot. Um, great for a lot of historical research too, because we can look at historical businesses. Um, but before I finish up with this one, are there any questions or does anyone want, to do, want me to do a sample search at all? No, I will go back. So let's see. So there's two more databases I'm going to show you, um, and then I'll kind of get into our grants and nonprofit stuff here. So um, the Small Business Builder is useful for um, both for-profit and nonprofit. Um, you do need to create an account, which is free. Just going to sign into mine. 
And so there's two portals here. We've got the for-profit portal and the nonprofit portal. And what we recommend this for most often is for building a business plan. You can see a lot of other items on here, um, but build, the business plan is the most useful. Um, there is uh, opportunity for financial projections, um, other things like business ideation or even an entrepreneur profile, um, break-even analysis. But if we go into the business plan, the lean business plan, or you could even do a full business plan in here, what this database does is essentially it's a template for that process. So it breaks everything down into small bite-sized pieces for you to fill out. And then once you, you are done with each of those pieces, you can download it as a PDF or a Word document and it's your completed business plan. So what I like about this is if you go into some of these sections, let's say we wanna look in the marketing and sales promotion. What it does is it gives you this prompt as to what you're going to be typing into this section and then it gives you the space to do those. So it really just makes this um, a much easier to digest process because you can do it one at a time and it gives you some, some prompts on, on what you're gonna put there. So what, what do you wanna put in your industry outlook? Here's a, a prompt on that. Um, your competition, what you should be filling that out. And so you'll fill out each of these sections and when you're done, you can just download it as a, a completed product. If you need assistance, um, first of all, you can always turn to us, but if you go back to the section, um, at the end of every section are resources. So we've got business plan resources that'll take you to some articles, some videos that can help you work on that as well. On the nonprofit side, we, we get essentially the equivalent, but um, we typically think of a business plan for a nonprofit as a strategic plan. Um, so we would go in, we would do the same. Uh, you can also work on your bylaws here, but I already showed you that we have a really handy template for that. But there are at the end, you can see bylaws and strate strategic plan resources, just like it was on the other section. But we can also do the same and work on um, our financials as well, and including some fundraising. I played around with this before, and you can keep track of donations as a pretty on a pretty basic level here. So if you haven't developed a way to track your donations, this might be a great option for you um, because you can start to put them in here, and then it will automatically put them into the other things on here. So if you start to really decide that you want to use this product and you start putting donations in, if you put them in there, it'll start to fill in on some of um, these other pieces. So your, your income and your expenses, although it's not gonna go on your expensive because a donation is income, but it'll auto fill and auto pull into those other areas. You just wanna make sure that you're on the right section here, whether you're a for-profit or a non-profit, but it'll be pretty obvious when you see strategic plan versus a business plan. It's also a great way if you want to do an investment, if you want to do a pitch deck, um, there are some um, options there. And there's also marketing plans on here as well. So that was Small Business Builder. Small Business Reference Center is um, and it's an EBSCO tool. So it, it, it's kind of like when we looked at the very first uh, the Business Source Premier where you can look for articles. It does have that capability, but um, the best things on here are actually uh, these full text ebooks that we have on a really a variety of topics. It could be about writing a business plan or it could be about your taxes or it could be about um, forming a nonprofit or fundraising for a nonprofit. So all of these are full text ebooks. These are NOLO guides, which we tend to have in the library. But if you don't have the time to run to the library and get a copy, or maybe there isn't a copy available, you have access to all of those. I don't even know which one I just clicked on. Uh, I clicked on your small business legal companion. So that's not probably, probably what I wanna look at right now. Let's look at uh, employer's legal handbook. So maybe you are getting to the point where you're ready to hire additional employees. Um, this is gonna be a book written by attorneys on that process. So just here's the table of contents. Um, so if you need to learn, you know, what questions can you ask in an interview? There's gonna be chapters on that. Um, there are other, I've shared a chapter from um, a book on small business on funding your small business quite frequently. Um, so whatever your needs are, you might be able to find a legal resource here, um, a full text ebook. Another one that I like to highlight in this database is our startup kit uh, resources. And not just for the sense of startup, but what they are is templates. So if we go into the sample, or sorry, the small business startup kit, we get all of these um, forms. So if you need to come up with a billable rate, there's a worksheet for that. 
if you need to do a balance sheet, there's a, an Excel worksheet that you can download, cash flow projections, a worksheet. So all of these um, pieces that you might be struggling with because you know that's not something that you had to do before, you can download a template that's really gonna help you do that. And then there's also a PDF that is a companion that'll show you how to use that. I love the billable rate worksheet um, because it does some really creative things. So I'll just pull that up real quick. So if you need to come up with an hourly billable rate, um, this gives you the opportunity to put in some other things that you might not have considered, like how much I wanna make in a year, how much vacation I wanna take in a year, do I plan on taking sick days? Do I wanna budget for marketing? You add all of that in here and then it's going to give you what you should be charging as your hourly billable rate to cover all of those things. So a really handy tool. Um, you can also access in um, both Business Source Premier, which I showed you earlier, and this one, um, publications. So if you are looking for certain business uh, magazines or certain business publications, you can sort through here or do a keyword search to find those. If you're on the nonprofit side, uh, it might be on the other one. You can look for Chronicle Philanthropy. Yeah, that was in Business Source Premier. I missed the opportunity on that one, but I know we have access to Chronicle of Philanthropy, but um, it could just be a trade journal or publication you might be looking for. Okay, I think that's the last one I want to show you before I get into the grant resources. Yeah, the rest of these are all investment resources that I wish were pulled off, but I promise eventually they will be. Um, so the one I want to show you um, is Foundation Directory Online, and that will take me a little bit to demo. So that's why I usually leave it towards the end. Just give me a second here. Before I dive into that, was there any questions over the million things I just showed you? I know it's a lot to take in, but if there are any um, questions over what you saw or didn't see and you want to know if we do offer it, I'd be happy to um, talk about that before I dive into this here. So I'll give you a second, you can put it in the chat or unmute. If not, I will launch into this. I, oh, that. Yeah. I hear somebody, yes. Yeah, I don't see anything in the chat. Um, this is great. Oh, we have something, building business credit. Okay, so um, that is that's a great question. And so sometimes it's really hard to build business credit. And when you're um, starting out, it actually ends up being your personal credit. So um, one thing that I would recommend if I go back to the business page, oh, I guess I had it open already, is if we go into that last one, Small Business Reference Center, um, these ebooks, the I'm gonna hopefully find the right one really quickly. I don't see it. So one thing that I always recommend is it's called raising money for your business. Oops, I didn't spell business correctly. There it is. So this resource um, can go through a lot of that process of um, funding your business and it can go over uh, billing business credit. Um, a lot of times some, some great strategies for that is just working with your own personal bank. Um, is, and one of the best resources for small business funding is actually a credit union. Um, they usually can offer lines of credit or uh, revolving loans that um, they tend to be a little bit more business friendly and a little bit more, uh, I guess, willing to put that risk out there than a traditional bank is. So um, I always recommend checking out um, a credit union. Um, but when it comes to getting funding for your business, at least early on, it does um, depend on your own personal credit a lot. So there are financial opportunity centers in the community. Um, I know ProMedica offers a financial opportunity center. I mentioned LISC earlier as 
um, a place to check out for funding, but they also do manage their own financial opportunity center. So they can work with you both individually or as a business to help you build that credit. Um, they can give you those strategies uh, to, to, to work through all of that. So um, this resource, so again, that was called um, Raising Money. Oh, this is the wrong chapter. This is for nonprofits. Raising, but it's called Raising Money for Your Business. Let me go back. Or um, I recommend working with a financial opportunity center. There it is, chapter nine, raising money for your business from the book, Legal Guide for Starting and Running a Small Business. So this is the one I, I have this downloaded, so I never have to look it up. Um, I just attach it to a lot of emails, but this goes over all of the options for um, raising money for your business. And I love this resource because it really covers a wide um, swath of options for you. Now on the grant side, this is the resource that we offer at the library. So this is Foundation Directory Online. I do want to put out there, this is primarily for nonprofits. Oh, I see another chat. Oh, you're welcome. Um, primarily for nonprofits. And, and the reason behind that is um, it's kind of just the, the legal precedent from the IRS um, code that private foundations can only give to 501c3 organizations. Um, there is a small loophole where you can, um, uh, still get a grant from a foundation if you're doing a charitable activity, even if you aren't a 501c3 organization. But that is a hard sell. Uh, it's a hard case to make. So really, the, the, I always just say that this is really just for nonprofits. Um, but what this does is it finds funders. It finds funders, sorry, put the S in the weird place there. Um, you can get started with a simple search box here. But what I really like to do is just ignore that simple search box because it does some weird things sometimes and just use the advanced search filters here. And um, you can check out all of the um, subject header lines here, or you can start typing them in. So um, let's just uh, see what we can get if I start typing in developmental here. So grant opportunities for uh, special population support, developmental disability services, that's perfect. So what you wanna do here is we're searching what we do, what our organization does, and where we do it. So this would be, we'll start Lucas County. You can search Ohio as just a general search. We can do a city, we can do multiple counties if you um, actually provide services to multiple counties. And you can add a population. I don't recommend that every single time. It does narrow down your, your results. And because we are already searching for a subject area that has that population kind of pre-built into it, I don't think it's necessary at this point. The rest of the filters, you don't even have to worry about. It's actually, some of these you'll never ever use. I'll cover a couple of them here in a second, but just build a quick search that way and we'll see what we get. So Lucas County Developmental Disability Services, we have 29 funders. And I actually think that's a pretty low um, search result. So what I might suggest is uh, maybe widening that to Ohio funders. You could also widen that by adding some other things on here. So maybe you offer more specific services, or maybe you also work with other populations. Um, we can go through here and we can add things like that. So maybe you're um, a day facility. So let's see, we can do an, like an adult day. Maybe So maybe you offer adult daycare. Um, you can add and stack other subject areas to widen that search as well. So that got me 563 grant makers. So you might think that's a lot, but I'm in here a lot. Um, and that is not um, an overwhelming amount because you're not going to look at all of those profiles. But what these search results are telling us is that there are 563 grant makers who have made almost 3000 grants that match our search to 228 recipients. And so we are looking really for these trends because not every foundation has a website, not every foundation publishes these, these opportunities called requests for proposals. So this is going to give us access to all of those funders that we would really not be able to find otherwise. Uh, and we, we primarily want to focus on these grant maker profiles because all of this other information is on those profiles. So if I click that section here, this first one, um, view all. Uh, if you are a small organization, you don't have a lot of capacity to really do some relationship building. I recommend also checking this box, the include, or sorry, exclude grant makers not accepting applications. And that's going to about half the list for us. So it pulled off all of those grant makers who say they're only giving to pre-selected organizations 
or um, they're not accepting applications at this time. And then we start to look um, at this list and it's arranged by grant counts. The more grants they made that match our search, um, the higher up they're gonna be on that list. And um, we're probably gonna wanna ignore the first three actually, because these are all community foundations serving other communities. If you have programs in those areas, then you might want to be interested in those. Um, but usually they are always the first ones that return because they have a lot of money, uh, but we do usually, are, we're not eligible for those. So just as an example for how this database works, let's look at the fourth one, the Ava and Joseph Bruning Foundation. So when we look at these profiles, it's all prospect research from this point on. So we wanna make sure that they fund organizations that do work like us. And I think most of our things are gonna fall under human services. And that is um, a top tier category for this foundation. And we can see where that kind of falls in more uh, shelter, residential care, special population support. So, and this is also gonna give us additional terms that we can be searching for. So this is one that I didn't know was in here was independent living for people with disabilities. So that gives us another um, subject that we can look for. Or we can click in further into special population support just as a general category. But we're starting to see that they definitely are funding this area. Um, and we all wanna make sure that they're funding our geographic location too, because I did only search Ohio. And it's not promising on this one. So they probably probably only fund the um, Cleveland area, but I can kind of look at a wider um, time frame here. Uh, they made one grant to Ottawa County, <laughs> uh, but not a good option for, for this area, I don't think. But just to continue this as an example, um, these are the, the two areas that we'd look for. And then we also wanna look to make sure that they're creating grants in the amounts that we're expecting. So if you know how much your project's gonna cost, you wanna make sure that they're funding that level, or you might have to adjust and seek another funder or multiple funders. But if it looks like a good fit from here, then I always say, let's just jump down to the application section. And here's how we find out how we would apply to this funder. So we'll see that this one truly isn't a good option for us. They only um, give to Cuyahoga County, but let's pretend that that's not there. And we see, you know, how are we gonna approach this funder? So they have an online application. What are their deadlines? Those are listed here. How often or how quickly will it be before we know? Sometimes we'll see even like exactly what we need to submit to this funder. But this is really the bread and the butter of this um, foundation is to figure out how to apply to all those small foundations that we would never be able to find. The rest of this profile is really just more prospect research. So um, here are the grants that they made that match our search. The most common grant amount that they made for this area is $50,000, which is actually pretty, pretty significant. And we can look in, we can see what those grants might be. So this one was sent, uh, given to the HELP Foundation for a summer program for children and young adults with disabilities. So um, now we know what kind of work they're, they're funding. We can maybe even look for more subject terms to help us build a better search. But um, that's really what this database is. It's, you can spend a lot of time on it um, doing all of this work um, and just making sure that you're finding funders that are a good fit. So, I mean, we get a little bit of background information. Um, sometimes we get other suggestions for funders that are similar. And then um, we have who works there or who's on the board. So maybe we have some shared networks that might open the door for us. They have communications. What we really wanna do is just learn as much as possible about the foundation. And then here's the contact information at the bottom. So I actually offer some really in-depth classes on this or one-on-one -on -one sessions. I can talk about this specific resource for one or two hours and we don't have that kind of time, but this is just a really quick overview of what this tool can do. Um, you can download any of this information. And so uh, remember early on, I said that I can by request send this data to you. So um, on that small business page, small business and nonprofit page, you can submit a request and I'll pull this data and email it to you. It's always better if you pull it yourself because you know your programs better than I do, but I'm more than happy to get you started and send you some information um, that way. If you come to, the, come to main library to use our grants computer, you can save all of this. You can pull PDFs or email it to yourself. Um, of the profiles, you can um, download up to 10 of these profiles into one PDF at a time. You can just save this whole list. You can save the individual grant detail as well. So um, you don't have to spend all that time in the library. You can just pull a lot of data, take it with you and then look at it later. 
Um, another option for you to find grants is a database called grantmakers.io. And this is not one that the, the library subscribes to. This is freely available to anyone um, at any point, 24 seven access. Uh, it's not as good, it's not as in depth as um, foundation directory is. Um, it's um, primarily getting all of its data from um, public IRS data, but um, free is always good. So it's a great starting point if you're looking for grant opportunities. Um, so you just go in here and it's really just a keyword search. So once you're familiar with FDO, Foundation Directory, it's it's going to be this it's going to be very similar, just a little clunkier. So let's do developmental disability, or actually I'll leave at, at disability because I don't want to put disabilities or disability with a Y. I'm going to keep it kind of open, so it's going to capture all of those words. Um, kind of leave it open ended there. And so we're, we're going to get all these um, keyword searches that have those in there. And I'm actually going to filter for Ohio. So here are all the grants that were um, returning on this keyword um, for Ohio. And so if we see one that looks like, you know, it was a grant that in an area that um, my organization will, will do. So this one is open ended. It's just adults with developmental disability. Actually, that's interesting. It, it ends with an I. <laughs> um, but then, then we start to click on the um, foundation to get more information. So um, much like the other pro, um, other database, it's a full profile on this foundation. And here are all the grants that they've made that we can look through. But here is the information on how to apply. So here's that contact, no deadlines, and um, they're just looking for a written proposal. So there's not a lot of information here. But um, getting the contact information is often the hardest part. So this database, it, it's really great to get started with um, before maybe coming to the library to do that more in-depth research. So again, that's grantmakers.io, which is also the website. Um, if you are a nonprofit, I do also want to recommend that you take your GuideStar profile. So, if you're unfamiliar with GuideStar, it is a transparency database. It's also owned by the same organization that um, owns Foundation Directory. And um, it is just a database of nonprofits. And it gives you the opportunity to tell your story. And it can often lead to um, more donations from a foundation or even um, individual donors. Um, they turn to this to find information on nonprofits. So, uh, let me do. Just a quick search here. We'll do the Toledo metro area. And let's look for subject area, human services. Special population and developmental independent living well, that one in here too so what we what i just did was built a list for nonprofits in the toledo area um, that offer services and um, for developmental disabilities and um, you can see you might even see your own organization on here um, we actually only have two that have returned that have taken their profile and re received a, a badge of transparency a silver and a gold um, but it, because this database is owned by the same company that owns Foundation Directory, if you get gold status and you, I believe if you are an organization who gets, I think it's that they've upped it to under a million dollars in revenue, you can get a year subscription for free to Foundation Directory online as well. So if we go in here and let's click on Bright Horizons because they've done the gold status, we can see um, that they have put in information about their organization that a grant funder can then find or a donor can then find. Um, to get gold level status, you have to put in some financial information, which I see that they have. Some information about their or their employees and their board demographics are all on here. So really that, that's what this is. It's, it's just an opportunity to tell the story of your organization. Um, if you don't take control of your profile, you still have one on here. There's just not gonna be anything on it. So let's click on um, Arc of Toledo. Uh, that might be a bad choice. It looks like it's no longer in operation. 
let's try a different one. Ohio Developmental Centers for Nursing Directors Association. Again, you, you might be more familiar with some of these than I. Oh, here they are again. This one's not, doesn't exist anymore either. Let's do, I am actually shocked. The Ability Center does not have a seal of transparency. But um, so if you have a nonprofit and you haven't taken control of your profile, um, all you would see is basically just this information here. This is what it's going to pull in from the IRS just automatically. Um, so you, this is where people can also access your tax doc, uh, um, documents as well. So um, they can still get a little information on, on your organization, whether you've taken control of your profile or not, but it's going to be pretty minimal. So I always recommend um, checking out GuideStar. So actually, I see we, we still got some time left, but that's kind of the, the overview of, of a lot of what we have to offer for businesses and nonprofits. So um, at this time, I'm really just going to open it up for anyone who wants to um, ask questions or maybe I can do some, some sample searching for resources. Um, but that's that's kind of the, the overview that we have. Um, you're welcome to set up appointments with either me or my colleague, Linda, um, and we can really contextualize these more on an individual basis for, for where your organization is at. Um, it is kind of a challenge to just give you this giant overview, and um, you might be wondering, well, this might not apply to me, but if we do ever get the chance to sit down in a one-on-one -on -one setting, um, we can make this a little bit more tailored to your organization um, beyond just the, the here's everything that we have that I just did. So um, if there are any questions at this time or if, uh, if anyone wants to see any samples, I'm happy to do that. Hi, Zach. This is Dana again. Um, Hi. I wanted to get, um, can, we, can I get your email? Yes. So let me put that in the chat for everybody. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So here's my direct number at the library. Um, if you lose this, you can always just ask for me. I'm the only Zach that works at the library. So if you just ask for Zach, it'll get you to me. But here's my email. And I see someone asked for Linda's as well. Lindolibrary.org and Linda. Linda's been here for about eight years. So a lot of people have heard of her or worked with her in the past, but she did business consulting prior. So she is well versed in this area. Library.org, Linda. Make sure I spelled it right. So that's Linda's email, Linda.fairweather at scootalibrary.org. And I remember her phone number is this. That is her direct line as well. So you can contact either of us. Again, if you're on the nonprofit side, you are going to want to contact me. But on the business side, you can talk to either of us. Um, we, we both know these databases like the back of our hand. So feel free to reach out to whoever you'd like on that side. I see a question or a, a prompt here, Emergent Intellect Arts Bundle. So are you saying you want me to look for like arts, um, uh, individuals who support the arts, like build a list around that? Okay, perfect, I can do that. Let me pull that up. So that was under consumer data and advanced search. So I'm just gonna open up all the filters here. So here's the arts bundle, the one you were talking about here. Um, if I click just this one, it's gonna grab all of them or you can specifically say um, one of these, although I think it's interesting that antiques is kind of grouped under there. I never noticed that before. So if I just grab the whole bundle, I will get those individuals. I wanna make sure I add that criteria, but we're gonna to wanna to also specify a little bit more than that. So um, I always start um, usually with the location, uh, however you wanna identify that location. Um, we'll just do Lucas County here again. And add that criteria. And so um, again, you can keep adding to that. You can say you want to look at people within that arts bundle that have a certain income range as well. But if I just do that, 
uh, we actually get a lot. So within Lucas County, um, people who have been identified have has having interest in the arts. And you might be wondering how that's identified. It's their marketing habits. This data is coming from your Facebook profiles. You buy magazines and those are sent to your houses. Um, if you've ordered things from Amazon, all of that data is being aggregated to make that determination. But here we have um, it, it built a list of 80,000 people in the county. And we can see that breakdown as to where they live um, community-wise. So we're getting you know, 5,000 people in that arts bundle live in Oregon. And we can just look at those people if you want to, just click on that. And so here's that list here. Um, I could have gone back. You'll see some duplicate names or duplicate addresses. If I go back, let me see if I remember where I can um, tell it to only do one per household. I usually do this more in reference solutions, so I might not be able to find it very quickly. Okay, I promise it's in here. Um, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but you can tell it to do one per household. That way you're just not getting duplicate addresses. Um, I know it immediately in reference solutions, but I just can't seem to find it here. But is that what you were looking for, that, that search? Okay. Yeah, once it, you just wanna make sure that you add every criteria and then at the bottom perform the search. And then you can play around with it. And if you wanna download them, um, you would um, select the, the results here and then you want to export the records right here. Let's see another chat. You're welcome. Okay. Any other requests? Since we have a little more time, unless somebody else has something in the chat, can you pull up like different RFPs that would? that are open right now in um, the developmental disabilities area, like under those grant, the foundation directory online? Yeah, I, I would be happy to. Um, I'll show you how you can find RFPs. Um, there aren't, this system doesn't specialize in RFPs, so you're not gonna find a lot of those. This is more about like funding trends. But oh. if you do wanna see RFPs, there is a column for that. So um, based off of the list that I pulled, the last column does have um, any RFPs that are known, um, but less than half of 1% of foundations actually publish RFPs. Usually those are our community foundations or maybe our government funders. Um, mm -hmm. So if I just scroll through here, we might not even see any. Yeah, none are popping up on the RFP side, but if we go to the homepage, there is a way that you can look for specific RFPs. So this would be under Human services. So um, it's going to be a little vague um, because human services is, is a very broad category. Mm -hmm. um, but you can find RFPs this way as well, just circle, cycling through. We can um, find additional ones. It'll take us to, oh, I didn't click on that. I wanted to see. It. There we go. It'll um, take us through all of the um, foundations that have RFPs and human services, which I know is not specific to this population. It's a little bit um, broader, but um, another way to look for RFPs too. Okay. So really the better way is to look through, um, use the filtering and look at each one to see what their cycle is for ap applying or how you go about yeah. applying. For yeah. Yeah. Specific... You're, you're exactly right. If I go okay. back, um, what you'll see is most of these um, these uh, foundations have rolling deadlines or they don't have very specific deadlines because they might do it like quarterly or monthly. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll just open up another one here, like the, the Reinberger Foundation. Um, they don't have a published RFP. What you really just need to do is um, make sure you get your proposal in and that you, uh, well, they, of course, they, theirs are on their website, but you just want to make sure that you're meeting their, their multiple deadlines. Gotcha. Um, so when you, if you're ever familiar with things like Grant Station or Grant Select, what they tend to do is take this exact information and publish it like it's an RFP, even though it's really not. So 
what they will do is, um, so let's pretend that's, that these board meeting dates are their deadlines, even though that's really what they're doing to, to decide their funding. What, what those um, databases do, they'll say, okay, this funder funds all of these things and they have deadlines of February, May, August, and November. So they'll make it seem like it's an RFP, but it's not really. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So is there, there's probably not a way to filter by these um, board meeting dates or whatever. Really, you're just gonna need to look at each foundation and kind of gather that information, right? Yeah, I, I don't think, I'll double check. I don't remember there being a filter for that so no we can filter by like support strategy so like if you're looking for a specific type of grant um if you say let's say if you want to um, expand a building or, or buy a building um you might want to specify something like that so we can search for for those or if you're looking for like a matching grant or um in-kind donations we can look for those things too but i don't believe that you can search for like those kind of deadlines other, there are so many ways that you can use this database too. So um, you can look for uh, organizations like yours. Since we do have the extra time, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, so like um, we've talked about Ann Grady already um, as, as a, a provider here. So we can look at other organizations that are doing the same work as you and see who's funding them. Well, that, that didn't work in my favor, did it? Let's try another one. They had a few profiles. And that's what the recipient profiles are really for here. So uh, let's see, most of them are funneled under the Ann Grady Corporation here. And so here are all of the funders, uh, at least the grants that they've received. Um, so we can start to see who is funding them and where their grants are coming from. So most of theirs are coming from other public charities. They're local, which is great. Um, it looks like actually most of their funding is coming from their own foundation here. Uh, here's one from the, the France Stone Foundation. So uh, what their group home program, but just another way to find other funders that are already supporting the work that you're doing is just searching for other similar organizations. Another uh, quick tidbit for, for searching is um, local is always better. So let's say instead of um, working, worrying about our geographic focus, we put in those search terms again. Disabilities, and then we actually want to look for only funders who are in this county. So, Lucas County funders. So, um, 20 grant funders who support this work that are local. So, just a great way to kind of um, uh, focus your energy on on funders who are more likely to support this area. Mm. See a chat in here too. So when you, I, I have a request to post the grant link. Did you mean um, to that other database or what? which link did you, were you referring to? If you don't mind uh, sending me another message here. Um, other things that are also worth noting are um, keyword searches. So if you're not finding a subject area that matches it really well, um, you can do a keyword search. So here are the, some of the things that I've had to do a keyword search on. Um, so maybe you're looking for a funder that's supporting a vehicle purchase rather than a building purchase. Um, that might be something that's better done as a keyword search. Um, it, it could be um, just those specific things that you're working on that you're just having, a, you're struggling to find a subject term. You can get started with a keyword and then kind of do some like reverse searching and, and we can go in those grants and see what what subject words they're using to learn how to better use the database. Yeah, I can post that grant link here. So let me open that grantmakers.io. And I'll put that here in the chat to everybody. There you go. Okay. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Or happy, like I said, happy to do other searches for you. 
or um, if you are thinking about um, starting grant writing, if it's new to you, uh, I do teach classes on grant writing. Um, I have what's called Grants Lab. It is a three-part series that I'm, I do. I break it up into writing the proposal, writing the budget, and then uh, a little bit more in depth on finding, uh, finding your funders, much like we, we covered here today. Um, I don't have them on the calendar right now. I'm going to do a session over the summer. But it, if you um, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get that information. But if you also just occasionally check our program calendar and filter for business development, you'll get all of our business and nonprofit programs that are coming up. So uh, let's see what's even just on the calendar right now. Um, so I've got one next week called Exploring Library Resources for Nonprofits. Um, I don't recommend going to that because I covered all those things here today. Uh, we've got Business Boost coming up, which is kind of the same thing, but um, Fundamentals of Starting a Nonprofit. Our Ask a Patent um, Copyright Attorney Program is coming up. Uh, we're trying to see Minding Your Own Business. I mentioned this one. So that's uh, creating... Um, record keeping. So if you need some help on, on, on learning record keeping or accounting for your business, um, that's a great uh, three-part series program that Linda is going to lead where she teaches you um, a really simple system for tracking your finances. So um, always great to keep on top of our programs, but if you don't remember to check the program calendar, um, sign up for our newsletters and we'll never send more than one once per month. Otherwise, I think that's all I have. Awesome. I had one more question just out of yeah. curiosity. I saw the Toledo Community Foundation pops up a couple of times. Is that um, something that would be social services oriented in the grants that they um, fund? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. I actually always recommend checking out their website because they have um, new opportunities throughout the year. So if you go to toledocf.org, and I will put that in the chat as well. You put that in, in the chat and then go to grants. Here are all their um, open opportunities, but also upcoming opportunities. Um, one I'd like to highlight that would be really good for probably any any um, nonprofit in this group are the community builder grants or the community impact grants, um, because they're not so much about um, that specific to uh, topic or subject. Um, they're more um, what 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 unmet need in the community are you fulfilling? What new and innovative program are you offering? So it's more broader than that, and, and it could still be a great opportunity for for organizations here. But here's where you'll see whatever they have open but also what's upcoming. So you can get a good idea. There might be one that you might have kind of an eye on and you're just kind of waiting for them to be published. Oh, very nice. Um, another quick recommendation too is, uh, there's a link to this on the page. I mentioned Candid Learning, but if you are going to do some grant writing, um, they do offer sample documents for you to download. So, Linking to this, um, anything that you access in Candid Learning is going to ask you to create a free account. So um, don't worry that if, if you get to that point, it's free. Um, but you can download samples of full proposals, budgets, um, a letter of inquiry. So if you saw on that database that the first step to approaching a funder is a letter, what they mean is a letter of inquiry, which is basically a mini proposal. And so here are some, some sample templates for, for those. Very nice. I feel like um, we could spend hours just diving into this website, you know, and going through these different filters. Um, I appreciate you spending time with us today. Are there any other questions for Zach? Um, we have obviously your information in the chat. So folks can uh, follow up with you or schedule a time uh, mm -hmm. with you or Linda. Um, I wanted to do a couple of little housekeeping things. If you didn't already put your name in the chat for your certificate of attendance, uh, feel free to do that at this point. 
Um, also, I wanted to give Angie Blake from Wood County Board of DD a moment to um, highlight our upcoming uh, June training. So Angie, if you wanna jump in here. Yeah, sure. So Mike Blackburn from the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio is going to do a presentation for us um, and answer questions that you might have about public transportation, especially the, the NMT, um, providing that service and how public transportation uh, rules impact providing that service. So Mike's gonna do, uh, he's actually gonna offer a hybrid session. He said he'd come to Wood County and then we'll also have it virtual as well for anyone who, but yeah, bring your questions about uh, transportation services. Awesome, so that'll be um, next, next month, June 16th, same time, one to three. So every um, third Thursday of the month through the end of the year, we'll have a different topic that we'll be sending out for you all. Um, but yeah, thanks, Angie. Um, thank you again, Zach so much for sharing all of your expertise with us. Um, last chance for questions as we kind of wrap up today. Going once, going twice. All right, well, we will um, go ahead and dismiss. Thanks again for being here and um, we'll be in touch via email for the next session.